Shalom. Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Waha, Waka, Kodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. Bahashem meaning coming in the name. Ba means coming in. Ha means the. Sham means name. Raka means holy. Kodash meaning spirit. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who will well and teach well because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect and shalom to you sincere brothers that are scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to you sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be titled as long suffering equals salvation. Okay. Long suffering equals salvation, right? Or equals patience. Patience equals long suffering. However, one of those two. But the reason why I titled this lesson as this is because we got to be reminded that there's going to be hardships. That's going to come our way as we live our daily lives. So you may be a brother that came into the truth and, you know, you went through things, but you didn't go through things as heavier as it gets when you come into the truth. You know, you may be a brother that probably may not went through nothing. But then when you came to the truth and you started, you know, being longer in your journey in this truth, things start falling apart. Things start going left. Crazy things just start happening out of the norm. You know, you wind up having a, you had a good relationship for a while and then it just went left. And then your, your, your woman, right, that you spent 10 years, 12 years, 13 years with, she winds up leaving you. Well, all of these things that you're experiencing, the finances, right, the, the mental attacks, you know, all of these different things you brothers and sisters is going through. Well, that's all within long suffering. That's all with temptation. Because the Lord, he has to try you as an Israelite. And mainly you Israelite men. The Lord has to try you to test you on your faith. Because you're claiming to be a man of the Lord. You're claiming... To be a man to do his will, right? You're claiming to be a servant of the Lord. You're doing the works, right? You're bound, abounding in the works of the Lord daily, right? You, you're, you're showing yourself to be this man of the Lord. And the Lord is pleased with that. He's pleased with that. The Lord is very grateful with that. But now he has to see if you're still going to glorify him. If he puts you through different situations or he allows you to go through different situations he'll send satan after you to try you to see if you're still gonna dwell in this truth or not or glorify him or not because just like it's like uh what my coach used to say when we used to be on the track team he used to say um because everybody be like i'm fast i'm the fastest guy on the track team or they'll say well when i get out there i'm dusting everybody I'm about to run a 10. I'm about to run a 10.89. I'm about to run a 10, 10, 9, 5. And my coach used to look at our teammates that used to be doing all that bragging. I've been running track since I was a kid. And he used to say, talk is cheap. Action is what matters. So at the end of the day, you can talk. You can do all the talking you want. You can do all the, all the boasting you want. You know, I'm not saying brothers doing that, but however type of spirit you are in, you got to prove that to the Lord, man. You got to show the Lord that you're not just all talk, that you are who you are. 
And that includes even on camera. When you're out there teaching, doing the works, doing lessons, you know, I'm, I myself am included in this. You know, it's easy to, you know, give double honors, you know, give all praise to Yahweh Hashim Shai, teaching breakdowns, doing all this other stuff, you know, reading scriptures and doing all that. But are you are you really that person who you claiming to be? Are you willing to take these afflictions and still be able to move forward with them? And that's what I'm experiencing. And that's what, you know, I've been feeling these past couple of days after my situation. Sirach 2 and 1, it says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Your soul for temptation. So you got to be prepared. And a temptation comes unexpectedly. It comes unexpectedly. You can get into a car accident. Right? You can, something could come up, something could happen. There's no end to temptation. This is why <coughs> we can't get comfortable in this truth. The Lord doesn't want us comfortable in this truth. And it's just a set of reminder. James 1 and 2. It says, My brother counted all joy, all joy, when ye fall into diverse temptations. And it's easier said than done to fall into joy when you've fallen into diverse temptations. It's easier said than done. Because it is in this flesh, we get pissed off, man. Just like that incident that happened to me, uh, I think it was the day before yesterday, man. I was... In the flesh, I was so goddamn vexed. But, you know, I had to remember and hit these precepts again. You know, reminding myself, like, hey, that's temptation, man. That's long-suffering. You remember you did a lesson on temptation. So all I, had to, all I did was just pray about it and, you know, hey, it is what it is, man. Thing, temptation is going to come. It says, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3, it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, because even though you're going through temptation, long suffering, that's all the trying of your faith. That's the trying of your faith individually. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You see that? The trying of your faith. And we're going to get that meaning for that word patience there. Because <clears throat> you may have brothers that's new in the truth. They may not know what patience means. This is uh, James um, 1 and 2, right? Oops, I'm in 2 and 1, right? The trying of your faith worketh patience. So when you go into the meaning of that word patience there, right? Strong's G, 5281. Upamane. Upamane. And it says steadfastness, consistency, endurance. It says, it says steadfastness, consistency, endurance. In the New Testament, characters of a man who is not served from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and penalty even by the greatest trials and sufferings. You see that? It says in in the New Testament, the characteristic of a man who has not sir who has not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith. You see that this is why we have to have faith when we're going through these trials and tribulations. You're being tried on that by the Lord. It says in piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. You see that patiently and steadfastly, a patient and steadfast waiting for a patient enduring sustaining and perseverance you see that so that word patience goes into upamane which means steadfastness consistency and endurance so you got to endure through these things and it's 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 easier said than done right it's very easier said than done especially the finance demon you know, you're going through finances, you're short on your bills, you know, you're, you're short on your car note, you're short on this, you're short on that. You're working 40 hours a week, and how are you short? It's crazy. You work 40 hours a week, you know, some brothers making between $1,300, and you're short. That is crazy, man. The inflation of these damn um, insurances on your car note. 
you know, uh, insurance, I mean, insurance on your uh, car, you know, your car note, your insurance be like damn near three, four hundred dollars. That's damn near paying as much as you pay for your damn car. You know, payments on your car for your car note. <clears throat> the inflation is 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 causing havoc amongst the people. You know, and it puts us heavier on a oppressed on a heavier scale. You know, it says knowing this that the trying your face, working patience, it's actually I'll just get it from here. Well, I can get it from there. It is what it is. So like it. It says, but let patience, it says, let patience have her perfection work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Verse five, it says, if any, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the most high that giveth to all men liberty of braid of not, and it shall be given to him. Verse six, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wine with the wind and tossed verse 7 for let not that man think that he shall serve anything of the most high but mainly you're going to go through your trials and tribulations man all right we all got trials and tribulations that we got to endure through individually in this truth okay so you <coughs> you got to be prepared for it when it comes you got to be prepared for it when it comes Romans 5 and 1, it says, therefore, it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the Most High through our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai. And it says, verse 2, it says, by whom also we have access, we have access, access by faith into this, into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. And that's what we do. We're prisoners of hope. We're hoping for salvation, even though we're going through these uh, sufferings and these afflictions and stuff that we deal with daily in our daily lives. Romans 5 and 3, it says that not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. You see that it says that not only so, but we but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And we went to the meaning of the word patience there. Consistency, endurance, right? Verse, uh, verse 4, it says, and patience experience and patience experience and patience experience and experience hope you see that so at the end of the day man we are going through these trials and tribulations you know daily enduring through them being that good soldier right for what reason to receive that salvation because even though we're going through the hardships here we're going to be rewarded double at the end of this <coughs> even though we're going through the hardships here we're going to have the door we're going to be rewarded for this double at the end of this. First Corinthians 10 and 13, it says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. You see that? But the Most High is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. So even though you go through these money finances, you may go through things mentally, whatever it is that you're going through in your daily lives. You know, you just got into a car accident, things like that, whatever it is. The Lord is going to put just enough on you, but he's never going to put too much on you that you can't, that you ain't going to be able to bear it. He's just going to put just enough on you to try you. He ain't going to give you too much that you can't handle. It says, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You see that? So he's never going to give too much on you that you can't handle, but he's going to give just enough on you to try you. You know, certain things, you know, you'll, you'll know, you'll know when you're going through temptation. You should know. Second Timothy two and three, and I know when I experienced Thursday, that was temptation, cause I was at a full stop, man, full stop. I was at a stop, a stop light. How can the person behind me just look, keep going straight and just hit and just hit the back of me? That's temptation, man. Everybody else is stopping, but that person, man. It's crazy. Second Timothy two and three. It says, "Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach." See, so you got to endure hardness as a good soldier. So whatever is thrown at you, in, you know, in this flesh, you got to be able to endure through it. I'm not going to say deal with it. You got to be able to endure through it. You got to you got to be consistent. You got to pray to the Lord, ask him for strength that you don't you don't lose the faith and fall out. Because if you fall out of this thing going through temptation, then that means that you probably wasn't of the elect to begin with. Because even when you fall out, I said this before, even if you fall out of the truth, you still got to deal with temptation. 
You still got to deal with temptation because we're under the curses. You still got to deal with it. Second Timothy 2 and 4, no man that war of entangling himself with the affairs of this life. You see that? It says that he may, that he may please him who... It says he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. You see that? So the Lord... He chose he chosen us to be a soldier. We didn't choose the Lord. The Lord chosen us into this thing. You see that? So the Lord chose us into this thing. So we gotta go through the hardships that come with it. You know, it's sweet at first, but it's 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 it's, it's it comes sour as you get into the truth. This is Hebrews twelve and five. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not thou the chastising of the Lord Because you're going to be chastised by the Lord The Lord is going to have you go through stuff in this truth Or even off a of camera There's there's no disputing that There's no going away from it There's no escaping it You're going to go through You're going to go through temptation in this truth You're going to go through long suffering You're going to go through all of that There's no escaping that man And it just doesn't happen once It's going to keep happening There's no end to temptation man all right. It says, my son, despise not thou the chastising of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Because the Lord is going to put you through different things. It could be many different things. It don't have to be physically. It could be spiritually. It could be mentally. The Lord is going to put you through different things. But that's all the that's all the trying of your faith. Right. Verse six, it says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Right. So he's going to put you through different things. It says, and scourgeth every every son whom he receiveth. So you might be a brother that may not went through nothing. But then as you come into the truth and you start getting longer in your journey, things start falling apart. This over here is happening. That over here happening. You get fired from your job, right? You get fired from your job. You get laid off from your job. <clears throat> you get into a car accident in your vehicle, you know? Many different things happen, you know? Verse 7, it says, if ye endure chastening, it says the most high dealeth with you as with sons. So if you're going through things, that means the Lord is dealing with you. If you're experiencing things, you're going through things, the Lord is dealing with you, man. Right? It says, for what son is he whom the father chastised not? Right? Because if the Lord isn't chastising you, he ain't putting you through nothing, then you should be worried. Because that means that the Lord ain't dealing with you. You're just going through total paradise right now. And nothing at all is wrong. Nothing going wrong. I would be kind of freaked out because it would be like, yeah, something's not right. Because it's not. Because the Lord is saying right here, he, ch he, he chastens those who he loves. He puts them through different things. Verse 8, it says, But if ye be without chast chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye, it says, then are ye bastards and not sons. So that means the Lord is not dealing with you if, you, if you're not experiencing anything or not going through nothing. Verse 9, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave him reverence, right? It says, Shall we not? Much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live, right? Because we had earthly parents, right? And our earthly parents, they had, a, you know, they disciplined us, etc. But now that we're in the truth, our Father, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, He's going he's gonna to put us through things. He's going to try us. He's going to put us through things. And that's a rock. I wanted to go down because there's actually more to that. That's a rock. Let me get that really quick. It's a rock. Uh, I'll start at verse 3 because I don't think I read all of it. Yeah, I'll read from the top again. This is Sirach 2 and 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart, meaning mine, upright and, con and, con and constantly endure. So even though you're going through the hardships, you still have to endure through this. Right? That goes to that word patience. You got to be patient. Our people are not patient. You know? It says, And make not haste in the time of trouble. Don't make rashful decisions. Don't go and do this because this is wrong. You think that you're going to go and do this is going to make it better. Nope, because by you doing that and doing this and think it's going to make it better, it can be much worse. Now you put yourself in a bigger, worser situation. You don't want that. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. Verse 3, it says, Cleave not, it says, Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Verse 4, it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. So we got to be patient. Even though we're going through these things, you know, even for me, what I'm going through right now, I'm being patient. We have to be patient, you know, be patient. It says it right here. It says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So even though that happened to me, I have to come back to these scriptures and I have to go over them again in my head 
And I'm like, you gotta remember, man. You gotta endure. You gotta, you gotta enjoy. You gotta, you gotta endure through this, man. You gotta take cheerfully, even though in the flesh you you're vexed to the max. But you just gotta take cheerfully, man. It is what it is. It says, and be patient, and be patient. So even though you're going through that, whatever is brought upon you, you gotta take it cheerfully, and you gotta be patient. It says, when thou art changed to a low estate, and that includes the finance, demon, etc., whatever you're experiencing in your life, in your flesh, you know, in this body, in this corrupt flesh of ours, we got to take cheerfully, right? It says, verse 5, for gold is tried in a fire and acceptable men in a furnace of adversity. So you're going to be tried, man. You're going to be tried, especially as an Israelite man. You are going to be tried in this Happy lifetime. Chance. See what you get. So lucky. I don't know where that came from, but you're going to be tried as an Israelite man. It says, for gold is tried in a fire. I'm going to call the beloved brother back. I'm going to call him back. It says, for gold is tried in a fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So you're going to go through different things. All right. Verse six, it says, believe in him and he will help thee order thy way of right and trust in him. So you're going to go through different things. OK, you're going to go through a lot. You're going to go through a lot of different things. All right. You can't get angry or upset. All right. You can't get angry or upset, man. All right. So at the end of this thing, all we can do is pray. All we can do is consistently thank the Lord. Even when we are going through these hardships, I got one more precept I want to add because I didn't ask that. I didn't bring that out. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think it's veteran. Oops. Oh, uh, your brother and um, saying, so I was thinking about it, but I didn't put it up there. First Peter one and nine, because we're not the, you're not the only individual out there that's going through these long sufferings or whatever it is that you're going through. You're not the only one that's dealing with this. All of us are individually in this truth. First Peter five and nine, it says, whom resist steadfast, it says, whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So you're not the only one in it. You're not the only one in this truth that's going through these afflictions and hardships. All of us are. All of us are. Okay. All of us are as Israelite men and women. We're all going through these hardships and afflictions. Okay. The main thing that you can do or the only thing that you can do is pray for, pray for, the, pray to the Lord, cry out to the Lord, read these scriptures Cry out to the Lord and continually endure. Don't stress yourself out. Don't worry about nothing. Just like what the elders and brothers say, if if it doesn't work out for you and you wind up losing stuff, then it was meant for a reason. It was meant for a reason because you can't stress out about things that's out of your that's that's not in your control. Okay, that's not in your control. Don't stress yourself out. You know, stress yourself out and worry. It's, it's it's out of your control, man. You know, and I'm speaking to myself first and foremost in that. So, hey, I just want to do a lesson on this. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash. And Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. And Shalom to you, sincere brothers and you, sincere sisters. You, sincere sisters, that's listening to science, our scriptures command you to do so. And double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Who will well and teach well. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. On to the next one. Shalom.